Welcome to the Liberalist live stream with Friended Forever. I'm Dan Verner from the Facebook. Joining us today, we have Kaz from the Scottish Libertarian Party and helping us host the Dankfest 2018 protest, April 23rd. How are you doing, Kaz? Very well, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. No problem. Also, we have Damnation from our Discord server. Disc uh, Matt, what's up? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Still the sinking black ball of death, like always. <laughs> Special, super special guest is Mr. Friended Forever. How are you doing? What's up? Hey, everybody. And also from the Discord, Yorick with the beautiful flag behind him. Hello. <laughs> but just wave. I said to say something. So we're going to go through some wild, wild news here. So first up, we have this beautiful, from the UK, police ordered to hunt pedophile hunters and crack down on vigilante groups. Let me get that up there. Now, Kaz, you had something to say about this there? Well, yeah, actually, for the past couple of, couple of weeks, uh, or a few weeks anyway, on, on Facebook, you see a, quite a lot of these live streams popping up. They're quite, they seem to be quite popular in Scotland. I know there's a couple that op operate in Scotland. Um, and essentially, the idea is that these volunteers get together and make fake Instagram profiles in order to, in order to um, I don't know, fish i guess for um for people who would and they, and they say they're like you know 14 and 13 and things like that and in order to sometimes even younger in order to um sort of try and track down some some of these guys who might be um might be child offenders or, or future child offenders and there there is a there is a whiff of a pre-crime element into this but what they essentially do is they is they go and they 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 organize to meet the decoy they make decoys on these instagram profiles they organize to meet and then the decoys show up and they're not they're not girls at all they're 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 these and um, either it's child protector scotland or one of the other groups as well they're 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 usually quite local and there's been a couple quite near nearby me and they essentially go and they they say here we've got evidence that you know you were you were intending to meet this this person, this decoy for X, Y, and Z purposes, and they phone the police, and they basically stand, you know, and protect that person. That that is essentially why they televise it, um, not televise it, put it put it live on live stream on Facebook. They say they they say it's for for his own protection, their own protection, and uh, and and to make sure everybody's going to be, you know, safe until the police show up. Yeah, so they're not really upset. Um that they're trying to catch pedophiles they're more upset that they're working outside the law i believe that's that, that's how that's the beef that they've got yeah that they're instead of I, some people saying that it could potentially um be entrapment but um it's it's a bit of a strange one because i think i think entrapment like you have to entice somebody to commit a crime they wouldn't otherwise have committed you know it's it's a it's a very strange one but they're saying that it does operate very very finally within the boundaries of the law even close enough to you to say right okay we should maybe shut these down um, so essentially you would say it's uh it's not exactly a liberal value you should understand that um the police have a monopoly of force and to work outside the law isn't really uh isn't really uh, good honestly like for lack of a better term at the moment the um the the thing I think one of the reasons why they operate is uh, one of the main complaints is especially in the UK and and some parts of Scotland that the police don't have the resources, um to actually do this work, um you know it's some it's almost as if it's like uh, it's a symptom of um, <coughs> the lack of the reach of the state being able to do whatever it needs to do and as a result uh, the vo the volunteer slash private sector has to pick up the slack we see we see this quite a lot in terms. of you know the NHS. You know there uh, there are certain certain sectors of the NHS where we have to have private ambulances. There are certain sectors of the of of the waste disposal, um, which is almost entirely in the hands of the state, and um, that have that have collapsed to the point where there's no no private elements and volunteers doing uh, doing their work to try and deal with waste disposal. So I think I think I might either be either be an excuse, um, you know, that these things aren't happening or maybe just a symptom of the fact that the, the, the state is dropping the ball in this instance. What do you think, Matt? I was looking at this as basically the same thing that, uh, what is, uh, was it, uh, uh, to catch a predator? What was it, what was the guy, what was the guy that was running that? Take a shade. Uh, Take a shade. 
Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen, yeah. This is very similar to like what Chris Hansen was doing. So I don't understand, like, is it like a, a difference between the, the the UK versus the US or like what? I don't know. Well, that was argued as entrapment as well, what Chris Hansen was doing. Um, a few of those cases were tossed out. Okay. As far as I recall, because I believe that's the case with these guys as well. These these pedophile groups are not are not. I I believe some of them have a hundred percent conviction rate. This is what they tell me, and um, this is what I've seen because I've watched a few of these streams as well, um, just out of curiosity's sake. And uh, I believe some of the cases were, were thrown out because there was like the, you know at the end of the day, you know, while they were intended, I I, I don't know. I'm not fully in, fully up to date with with what the law is on this, but they I th I think. They, there are some instances where they actually didn't do anything wrong. Like they've never previously spoken or intended to, to, to intended to, um, you know, force themselves on uh, a, a real child that's always been a decoy. So it's like it's a tricky one. Um, I'm not I'm not really sure, but I do believe that some of them have been axed. Like you know, there's there's not enough evidence or whatever to convict this person as a, you know as a as a child offender or whatever. Any of the evidence they come up with in this form uh, is probably, I know in American courts, would be inadmissible. So they would essentially be giving freedom to people who are target children. Friend, do you have any thoughts on pedophile hunting? Uh, get them, get string them up, hang them high. <laughs> but personally, I'd like to see them castrated uh, after being found guilty, of course. Um, yeah. Maybe just chemically. Would be nice. Is that really necessary? Do we really have to go through the trouble of a trial and all that stuff? Can't we just like take care of business? Chris Hansen comes out, beats him. Oh, <laughs> I, dude. I've, I, that to catch a predator is, I mean, it's salacious. It's, it's, it's like watching a, a car wreck. I, sometimes I feel, because they get people on there that are obviously like mentally retarded. And I, so when those people show up, I kind of feel like, okay, there's a bit of a... Tra it feels kind of like entrapment going on. But I guess if there are people out there on the internet, like kids out there on the internet doing that stuff, they would probably be taken advantage of. But I don't know. I feel like kids today are pretty wise to that stuff. So some some mentally deficient person showed up, they'd probably just uh, send him on his way or make fun of him. I don't know what kids would do today. You mean uh, the ability to troll yeah, Hunter. have you have you watched the Chris Hansen to catch a predator? I don't know what this other show is. I I just know to catch a predator. Yeah, that's yeah. the one that I was talking about. Is to catch yeah. a predator. I've 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 seen a few episodes but, of that. So this is like the YouTube version of to catch a predator. Some guys I think are doing so. kind of Facebook live feed, and it's and is uh I mean they're not working with law enforcement technically, so they're just a vigilante group then. Well, 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 they are. As soon, as soon as they essentially meet the person and confirm that the person that they are looking for is that person, and, right? Uh, but... and, uh, and the person has dealt with a decoy, they immediately phone the police and they keep the live stream going until the police arrive. And as soon as the police show up, they cut the feed. So hmm. Thanks very much. That's and the, uh, and but they don't. Know, the law enforcement doesn't know that this is going on ahead of time because the, as I don't know that they they can do that. I don't know the legality. W wasn't that very similar to what Chris Hansen was doing? Like they were working with a Chris Hansen was working with law enforcement, though. There's a big difference if you're actually working with law enforcement because they they do all ki kinds of stuff to you to make sure. Like you're, I think yeah. you're technically under oath when you're doing those in interrogations. So if they use any, well, they're recording everything, so I guess you yeah. don't really need to be under oath. I th I thought Chris Hansen was working with like a specific uh, like s like private group that was handling it. With, like if I remember correctly, I'm not 100 percent sure. About yeah, that. you may be right. Maybe yeah. they weren't law enforcement. Yeah. It seemed like there was a lot of excellent, but they no, they were working with law enforcement know, because like, they booked them right afterwards. They <laughs> they like took them to the truck and booked them. So I don't okay. know if like private investigators are like legal legal over here or the equivalent. I I do know they're legal in the states, so maybe you do have some kind of. Some Your, kind of private, quote unquote, law enforcement that does have the kind of jurisdiction, if that's the right word, to kind of have some kind of influence or some kind of way to, to you know, legally enforce kind of vigilante justice in that kind of regard. But um, then, of course, you, you would have to redefine it as no longer vigilante. It's, it's something more. It's, it's definitely a, an ethical gray area, though, because 
it does there is a there is somewhat of a feeling of entrapment in some of the situations but uh, you want to weed that stuff out and making examples of people i think is the right way to deter that kind of behavior because anyone that's seen those i mean there there's one episode that was that was crazy like the guy i don't know if you've seen this episode but a guy had written a note to kind of insulate himself from if it happened to be chris hansen and i think he's one of the only people that got out of it so i mean they were showing their cards by the show being on the air so long so some guy actually found a way around it which is just uh it's skeezy as can be it, i also think there was an episode one time where uh chris hansen showed up he's like oh the guy that they caught was like oh man i watch this show all the time oh that, that that's like a regular thing <laughs> Oh, well, you know, all those guys watch that show. Yeah, it's, it's weird. But in, in the YouTube realm of it, it's super bizarre because I mean, doing it simply for clicks just feels it feels dirty. I don't know. Yeah. It feels wrong because you're profiting off of something as as grotesque as pedophilia, which I, I do believe at least some of them. I do know that Child Protector Scotland are an NPA. I think they're an official charity. Um, I say official charity is, and like they 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 have um, like a legal means of funding. Oh, okay. Well, so um, I, and and these guys, are, as far as I'm aware, purely operate on Facebook. Um, from from like, I don't know if you can get funding from Facebook. Um, York, you have any thoughts on pedophile hunting? Yeah, personally, I see nothing wrong with it if uh, no violence is being committed. You know, <clears throat> they might be doing it for clicks, you know, but like. Uh, we 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 get less pedophiles. They get their moment of fame. So that I think that's a good deal. <laughs> well, I think an easy fix would be the police to actually do their jobs and catch the pedophiles because obviously there's demand to catch pedophiles. You know, like hurting easily, not easily, but arguably the people in society. Um, maybe they feel that the police aren't doing their jobs. So instead. Mm -hmm. of Cracking down on these people, the police would be better served working with them. I think. I think the gray area, though, is how much pursuing is the the decoy doing, which we don't really have access to on the show or or in in the to catch a predator realm. We don't necessarily know how much. And they're they're if they're making money off a show, and I don't know who these people are involved with though, there is the incentive to move more towards the end of the entrapment scale. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. So I mean, if if the like if the person who's who's the the pedophile is doing all the pursuing, yes, I'm one hundred percent in favor of that. But there there are mentally challenged people involved. And if the decoy is actually pursuing them, like, I don't, I don't know the details of how they're doing these operations. So that's one of the reasons why I would much rather have it in the hands of law enforcement, because the law enforcement knows the details of entrapment and how far they can go. And they also don't have any financial incentive to entrap anyone. Yeah. Well, I'd say if they want to uh, stop these, I'll, I'll just say it again. If they want to stop these vigilante groups, maybe the police need to start doing a better job. Because if you saw like Telford and all these grooming uh, abuse scandals and oh, yeah. there was Telford, uh, where else was it in the UK? Anyone know? Uh, Rotherham. Rotherham. Like, um, they're obviously not taking the proper priorities, at least their police forces, as far as it looks like. Um, yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty gross that they're going after, um, always goes back to the same scapegoat though. It's always, oh, we're underfunded or the police are underfunded or the, the, the Tories are a bag of shit and they, they you know, they're not able to, they're, they're, they're cutting police funding X, Y, and Z and, and this kind of thing. And it always seems to be the scapegoat. It's always then becomes a political football at that point. You know, it something just gives the opposition a chance to go, Hey, Hey. We'll fund the police more, um, and then it's like, okay, well, what do you mean by that? Because you know, now we're talking about like arming police officers at one point, 
um you know how how far do you want this kind of funding to, to go you know we're talking about like you know i think there's a fundamental um it's a fundamentally broken system especially in scotland like police scotland is such a a centralized group um and i i think uh, it, it takes away this kind of community element of policing anymore so police can't you know actually you know they're not really part of the community anymore they're so alienated from from society if you want to if you want to word it that way and it's and um, there's no like bobbies on the beat you know back, back in my, my dad's day um you know he was on first name terms almost with with the police officer and his dad knew and it would be a case of you know he didn't want to act up and and get in trouble with the police or get taken home by the policeman because you know his his dad would be pissed off like why 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 are you getting in trouble with it with you know officer whatever his name is and because they were they were on great terms and i think there's a lot of that now missing these days there's no real kind of personal connection with the police so i think this is why people feel it. they want to take kind of things into their own hands because they're so alienated from this from from this central pol- centralized police uh Cass, do does scotland have like uh, assigned uh c- certain policemen were assigned to an area like at least we have that there we're, I think what we have here is we have community officers. They're not like full, fully fledged, but full blown police officers, but they deal with mm. community issues. And I think they they go these these are police officers that are um, in charge of things like domestic violence and and kind of uh, lack of a better term, kind of urban issues, kind of within within sort of these kind of rough areas and and whatever. But um, yeah, uh, not not as far as I'm aware. Um, you know. Uh, the, the the police police Scotland is a very is is almost like it's one single organisation that takes care of all of the police all over Scotland apart from maybe some sections in the Highlands because uh, the Highlands are a different beast entirely it's it's different geographically so I think there's different d- different policing up there um, but uh, police but police there's more and more kind of um, you know powers being sort of centralized within police scotland recently and i think that's what's causing a lot of a disconnect between the community um you know or the the general public and the people that are supposed to be protecting them um i think i think nowadays especially with a lot of ways that the cases are going especially with one of the topics we're going to talk about tonight that i think more people are actually are afraid of the police and they're they're <laughs> They're apprehensive uh, about about this big uh, this iron fist organization that is going to lock them up for for and threaten them for saying for tweets, but they're um but you know they were having to resort to our own devices in order to catch, um child molesters. Uh, it's uh, it's a ship- bit of a sorry state of affairs. <laughs> Let's shift to that topic about people getting arrested for, you know, jokes. Um, so Facebook post uh, that happened in Vietnam as well. It happened three in the morning. I heard three in the morning. Uh, there was someone in London, like six people after the Ariana Grande concert. Um, they got their doors kicked in and dragged out for social media posts. Um, so, Kaz, you're alongside the liberalists and the you're part of the Libertarian Scottish Libertarian Party. And you're putting together and have put together Dankfest 2018 at the courthouse April 23rd. How's that going? How's the planning going for that? It's going pretty well. It's a it's a slow train, but it's moving forward. Uh, we're um, we're looking to get together, obviously, on the twenty third. Uh, it's sentencing at ten a.m. and we're hoping to be there to kind of support it um, an hour before that. And um, yeah, it's it's going quite well. I think we've now got over um, over thirteen hundred people interested or going, and there's been quite a lot of support. Um, there's been a little bit of uh, of, um, of a little bit of media coverage as well, thanks to one of one of the um, one of the kind of semi-local rags in Scotland have, have mentioned us a little bit, and that's that's actually helped us out quite a lot. So thanks, Scottish. Yeah. Um, how's how's it looking for a pub afterwards? Um, yeah, pub. I'm looking to get into. I, I tried to get in touch with um, a couple of pubs, and I've been uh, I've been unsuccessful in tracking down managers. But the, there is a pub that um, that looks um, like to can accommodate us. And as soon as you get a hold of the manager, warn him <laughs> that we're all going to be there and make sure he can accommodate us all. I think that's going to be that's going to be fine. But yeah, we are definitely going to insert pub here afterwards. So uh, you know, if anybody doesn't have any plans after the after the sentence and depend, depending on what everybody's mood's like, we can all descend and talk public. I would suggest with the pressure the left likes to put on um, that we keep the location of afterwards quiet at the event we tell people. 
It's just we'd rather not uh, announce the pub so that they can call them up um, and pressure them to not host us. Like, you know, that's absolutely one of their uh, favorite MOs. Too. Um, go yeah, Jack. That makes sense. But your, um, your mic's just going off just a little bit quiet. Um, myself? Yeah. All right, well, I'll speak up a little bit then. Uh, generally speaking, in Scotland, uh, is there any kind of... Um, anyone in public, like the general public, aware of what's going on with uh, Count Dankula? Is that, or is it kind of out of their perspective? Um, I th it's, it, is, it is a tough one, because, uh, but I think... I think there's there's even people just from an anecdotal perspective, you know, people within the sort of um, political anorak circles that I'm around, that there are people that I would never expect to turn around and support this. There was an article in the Guardian of all of all papers that is, you know, it's extremely left. I mean, I'm I'm talking squishy liberal left, um, you know, it's uh, and it's um, uh, it's it's usually one of the one of the kind of anti free speech um, kind of tabloids if you will but they actually the, there was an article in it actually coming out in kind of support of it because i think more and more people are recognizing that 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 when we're talking about free speech we're not just talking about the 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 ability for the right wing to say horrible things that they don't like it's the ability for anybody to say horrible things that that, that people don't like <laughs> um and great things that people maybe don't necessarily don't like and challenge the orthodox and you know do all the things you know the cool things that the left used to do which was challenge the man and challenge the establishment um and uh so i think people are kind of kind of remembering those roots a little bit they're going hey wait a minute like you know we didn't sign up for this and you know these are mechanisms that are so dangerous that if one day we did have a right-wing government in place you know what's to say that you know they could use these things to to, to lock them up so um i i think i do think that I certainly think there's an an aura of how serious this is and how much of how much of a joke it is um which is ironic how you know, a country that is interna international, become an international laughing stock as a result of locking someone up or threatening to lock someone up for a joke. Yeah, Yorick, uh, where are you from? Are you having the same problem with free speech? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm Dutch, so uh, we. I don't know of any cases except for one in which a politician, uh, Geert Wilders, you might know him. I uh, got. Uh, a lawsuit for uh, stirring up hate uh, because he said uh, at an uh, I, I don't know exactly where it was but he said like do you want uh, more or less Muslims and people uh, said, said less 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 and then uh, later he got <laughs> he got the lawsuit for that he did get convicted but only to a small fine I believe a well, small fine can become a much larger problem than the yeah, because it sets precedent. What happens if it doesn't pay the fine? You know that's, hmm? that. What happens if he doesn't pay the fine? That's the inevitable conclusion. He, yeah, he he is going to jail. He's going to jail. Uh, what happens when he refuses to jail? You know, <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where the that's that's where it starts to become a, a very big problem um, with with serious authoritarianism. Right. So, um, Matt, where, where would you place the limits on uh, freedom of speech? Uh, would you lock people up for uh, having a dog that puts his paw up? Matt? Matt is gone. Friended, how do you feel about limits on free speech? Where do you place them? Uh, we have freedom of speech in the United States, so um, hate speech is free speech. I really don't believe there's such thing as hate speech. Except well, they're try they're trying to define hate. They're try in the process of defining hate speech, but hate speech is you're you're to your God given right to hate people in the United States of America. So uh, hate away. Right. And the thing is about um, American free speech is that you can't libel or slander someone, but those are civil. Uh, fines. Um, those aren't. You won't get arrested. That's, that's different. It's actually different than hate speech because libel is say making factual statements that are untrue that you that you know to be untrue about people. Like if I was to publish an ad that said you were a child molester, obviously it would. If you're not a child molester, tr truth is the defense against 
slander. So it's a very, very specific thing, and it has to do with uh, factual statements. But if I I could come out and say I hate Trump, obviously, like that would that could be considered hate speech, right? I'm I'm hate I hate somebody, or I, I hate you know insert X, I hate whoever, whatever. Right. Well, the thing is, if you say I hate Trump, you automatically get a blue check mark on Twitter. I mean, yeah, totally, exactly. But, uh, I don't understand. No, well, I do understand it. There's a, the argument made that if you allow hate speech, quote unquote, then these ideas propagate. But my argument is uh, the only thing that will propagate hate is poor arguments against it. And I feel like we're at a danger, at least Europe, parts of Europe, are at a danger of not being able to articulate a proper argument against um, extremism. Nailed it. Nailed it. We disarm, we, we do an injustice to ourselves by not allowing people like that to speak. All right. If I recall correctly, um, the British National Party, I think they were called BNP, um, in the 80s, they were had a media blackout. Um, they were extremely far, you know, extremist, authoritarian. And because of the media blackout, a lot of people didn't know exactly what they stood for, but they liked the name. You know, that's one guess. It's one theory. And they won, I think, about four seats in the late 80s um, in Parliament. And right after that, the media realized, like, uh, we better start letting them speak in public, you know, on our airwaves. Once they did that, the next election cycle, they were gone, completely voted out because people saw them for what they really were. So, so I think it was Nick, I want to say Nick Griffiths, he went on BBC Question Time. Um, one night, uh, and I think that night their their membership cut in half um, because he was he was on and he was basically saying all these racist things, <laughs> and people were like, "Hey, I'm, I'm I'm not a racist. I don't want to be in the BNP," and they left. So now the BNP are like a funny little footnote in the political class of not of the of the of the UK. Like you know, they're 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 barely even fringe anymore. Right. It's like uh, if you want to get rid of mold, you pull it out of the basement. You know, you. Sure. Uh, well, you, I mean, you, you look can't at what quantify hate speech, limit though. speech is you've got the, whole, the problem with the Holocaust on Island France. Like, the, you, it is illegal to talk about um, any kind of. Um, any kind of topic. I mean, even just having this conversation in France about Holocaust denial, even just saying the words, um, um, you know, may, may, may cause you problems in France. And as a result, they have a very um, sort of serious kind of epidemic, if you like, of, of Holocaust denial within little cliquey underground groups that have no, that create echo chambers where extreme ideas are not challenged and there's nobody there to go, hey, that's a stupid idea. Right. Even like, uh, for the proponents of people who want hate speech laws, really the only question you should have and demand they answer is who decides. Like if you have someone deciding what is offensive, how do you decide that? The only way you decide that is what's offensive to those in power at the moment. And like you said earlier, like eventually uh, someone will come on and come into power and say, um, well, that's offensive. You can't speak out against us because we're offended by it. I mean, the most offensive thing to power is truth. So maybe we shouldn't get rid of our uh, amazing First Amendment here in America. I hope we don't. Uh, Canada has had a few comedians get charged. One guy got charged, I believe, $25,000 for a stand-up act where he made fun of a public figure's appearance. And the guy is apparently handicapped, but he looks like it. You know, he looks like a Riri. But uh, he, the comedian got fined like twenty five k or something crazy like that. You you can't know in in advance though when you're breaking the law because you can't know if this is going to be offensive to somebody. I mean, I guess there are certain situations, but I don't think, I like the Dankula situation. I don't think he anticipated what he was doing would get him in the situation that he was in. Like, how do you how do you avoid? Most of the time, crimes are something that you know you understand that I'm committing a crime. And I could get in trouble for this. With speech, yeah. it's who you really. How do you avoid? I mean, now I guess people know not to make their pug seek heil, but I mean, <laughs> like, still, it's it's, it's so funny. I it's don't not a. 
thing is, I, like, I, I'll, I'll watch the video for the first time. A couple what weeks, about what about those cats with a Hitler mustache? Stars. Now do we have to euthanize yeah. those? I mean, like, where do we oh. draw the line? Yeah, where does it stop? Is yeah, the- I've seen cats on the internet that look exactly like Hitler. They got the the hairdo and they got the little mustache and everything. And they got the little seen- armband on and all of that. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen one with the armband. <laughs> the big problem though but, but i'm just saying not, like where does it not, end it's not applied equally because if it wasn't count dankula mark meachin let's say it was john cleese well, it, it was the judge that ultimately made the decision right yeah john cleese get arrested no you know he wouldn't so yeah. if john cleese murdered somebody and i murdered somebody we'd both be arrested yeah. but john cleese and mark meachin made the same joke only one of them would have gotten arrested and that is absolutely the case it's not about class or anything like that i'm not trying to make that argument but it's yeah. simply um they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to well-known people over people they don't know obviously so at its heart it undermines equal protection under the law and it's not even really a free speech thing it's just if you don't have the same protection as everyone else does if john cleese can say it and you can't then you don't have equal protection under the law that's that's the real problem here it's a subjective law it's, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's There's not even thing. a good law to to be honest like something like that shouldn't be allowed in the in the book the scariest element of this is that the judge or the prosecution said the context was irrelevant which means that even by simple even if the prosecution or the judge turned around and said, quoted Count Dankula and said, gas the Jews at any point, he'd be liable. Yeah. For the same he'd be, yeah, yeah he'd immediately. Be guilty. I'm guilty saying it right there. That's me. I'm fucked. Yeah. I feel like. I'm trying to understand where any other law would have that phrase, context doesn't matter. Um, I have probably a few. I'm uh, thinking about it, but. Um, yeah, I was trying to like the idea that context doesn't matter is so it's so fucking weird like, yeah what is a judge supposed to judge then simply the words <clears throat> like, with nothing else around them i guess so i mean he tried to say that he, he tried to use his dog as a platform to be racist oh so on a, an mp said he should be charged with animal abuse. With that's animal insane abuse. that's fucking insane <laughs> list.uk i can find the site and post it up they have like mp responses and i'm through them and of course every single labor politician is against a labor yeah i was just going to say yeah and yeah. once said like oh we should be charged with animal abuse i i'd like to say though that we should even just stop saying the word free for speech because honestly um that's what they attack they go free racist right no we should turn around and say we're defending the right to speak so that we paint them into a corner so that the uh the opponents they go they have to attack speech itself so i wouldn't even say it's about free speech i say it's about speaking it's simply about speaking because i would love to see them try to attack speech like yeah. how to speak <laughs> if, if if uh if you can get rested for what someone thinks about you basically because something what you say leaves an impact if that impact is grossly offensive in their opinion that in that you you couldn't speak because everything you say you could get arrested for that yeah it's it's really hard to fathom how a country can slip like that you have any idea kaz what happened to scotland i think i think it was a a, a, a... The polarizing issue in Scotland is independence. This is the elephant in the room. And I think since the SNP have been the driving force of independence, I think there's a lot of people in Scotland, an awful lot of people in Scotland that will hold their nose to vote for the SNP in order to drive the the issue of independence further. That means that the SNP are like the sacred cow in Scotland because they are the ones that are waving the independence banner. So it's almost like half of the country feels like they have to support them in order to drive that 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 um that desire forward so they are willing to vote for snp for nearly any reason whatsoever 
they will they will vote them in and the SNP can drop in laws like the Named Persons Act, which was an absolute abomination, like the Offensive Behaviour of Football Act, which is now being repealed. But, you know, I was an SNP brainchild. You know, ideas like Police Scotland, like, you know, they are becoming far more um, authoritarian and and f much further to the left because I think one of the one of the elements in Scotland is we've Scotland hates Tories. We hate the Conservatives. That's generally the, the, the rule of thumb in Scotland. And with the Conservatives taking such a surge to the left, especially with the likes of David Cameron, Theresa May, that I think in order to look as different from the English as we can, we've to go even further left than them and we've to adopt all these policies and you know, and it's it's become just an absolute a, a stupid game of who can out left who. Um and uh, meanwhile the, the SNP are allowed to uh, continue this circus um on the basis that they're the only ones driving independence, which half of the country will support them for. So I think that's what's what that's really what happened to Scotland in, in recent years, um, for sure. Um, what happened to Scotland from a from a further kind of more historical perspective is we're, we're you know there's there's no free banking anymore. <laughs> you know there's no free market. <laughs> um, Adam Smith's dead. That's you know these these types of things. And so we're gonna we're gonna shift over to a new topic here, and uh, this is from Campus Reform. Hold on one second. All right, so a new book claims video games perpetuate injustice. Guys, what, what can't video games do? It's amazing. Uh, so it's written by a professor. Uh, oh, go figure. We want you to practice woke gaming. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, woke gaming. No, absolutely not. I refuse. <laughs> Oh, teaching classes. classes on social justice and black studies in Washington State University. Social, stu social justice classes in black studies. That Washington State University, you say. Hmm. Now that is some prime. That's some tasty cancer. <laughs> Toxic meritocracy. Yes. Uh, Don't be it, better than me. How dare you? Wait. Toxic meritocracy. So if you're good at a game. I've heard the complaint before that, like the phrase, get good, that you see that's like playing Rocket League or other competitive uh, online gaming. It's like saying get good and stuff like that is like, even the phrase good game, I've heard people say, is um, toxic meritocracy. Uh, so who's got some thoughts on toxic meritocracy? Go ahead. Toxic meritocracy is one of the dumbest uh, oxymorons I've ever, ever heard in my entire life. Like the concept exactly. of <laughs> the concept of something that you're good at and you being judged as bad because you're good at it, I don't, ugh, I hate that. That is such a stupid fucking idea. <laughs> well, the book also, uh, it also is premised on the intention that video games reinforce racism and sexism. So let's, do, let's run down the checklist. Racism, uh, not racism. Video games, they uh, cause people to kill. They cause racism. They cause sexism. Now they cause guess injustice overall uh, this is leaving me speechless at this point like <laughs> this is a joke right i mean Race <laughs> right <laughs> racist sexist homophobic yeah we, it's like it's like you're playing donkey kong and you're like all of a sudden you're like raping <laughs> yeah I I just woke up after playing a game, uh, like uh, some GTA, and I want to go beat a hooker with a baseball bat. Like that's like that's what this type of shit is saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I would love someone to record her class or his class or whatever, or sorry, Z's class. <laughs> Z's class. <laughs> That'd be like, I just want to know what goes on in there. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Oh yeah. Did, did you read the article? What's the context? Is he saying that video games are bad? What, what context? Yeah, I mean, I've read I read a book, Why Gender Matters, where he talks about violent video games a bit, and he doesn't. I mean, both sides kind of make a caricature of of the the debate over video games, but we as human beings 
mimic uh, what we see <laughs> as culturally acceptable relatively easily. So I think there is some argument to be made that games that have a really messed up moral outlook. I think are- it's backwards, to be honest. I think uh, any kind of creation in the you know artistry, any kind of creative field, mere reflects the society in which they were created in. Um, you know, you, you have- so so okay. So in I mean, there are parts in Grand Theft Auto, like the classic one people talk about, is where you ha- have sex with a hooker and then you kill her and take your money back, right? Yeah, that's something that we probably shouldn't do. Like, I agree. Uh, yeah. as a society, that's probably so. something. Yeah, that's probably not uh, not great. Well, it's not a it's not an obligation in the game. You you don't have to do it. It's not part of a mission. You know? No, totally. Is, yeah, uh, and that looks. That makes a difference. I, I see you're hooking murder, and I raise you the torture scene in um, in Grand Theft Auto V. I believe that actually is mandatory within the within the context of the story. You have to go through it, and I do remember playing that part of the game and feeling extremely uncomfortable. But I knew okay, quite so well. I, I found it really that. funny. Like yeah, I fucking loved that part because it was like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it, I mean. It yeah. was so it was so over the top. It was uh, it it felt great. Like uh, it's one of the most memorable parts of GTA Five. So, so, so we can make a distinction between uh, morally reprehensible violence and and morally justified violence in video games. Like if you're playing a spy versus spy game where you're engaged in in violence that's against no, I don't know, Nazis. <laughs> it's just, like, uh, I mean, Nazis were the go-to bad guy in, th- in three, four, I don't know how many Indiana Jones movies there are, but I mean, that seems to be the go-to bad guy in lots of movies. So I'm just saying there's, there's, a, there's a moral compass inside video games that I think... See, some video games, you have, um, you'll have the option, like in Mass Effect, to be Paragon or, you know, the bad guy, and you can choose to go that way. And I tell you personally, when I'm playing those kind of games that give you a choice, I can't be the bad guy. I feel bad. It's Oh, man. I was chaotic evil was my oh, thing yeah. in Dungeons and Dragons yeah. every time. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> video games I always never give Video games always give me a portal to like, you know, to express my inner evil. <laughs> so I don't express it on actual people. Yes. That's, you know, there's well, no argument to be had. <laughs> it's, it just, it slightly bugs me a bit when people talk about violence in video games and they don't make the distinction between, because like you can talk about violence in movies and it really depends upon the moral compass i mean i wouldn't there's a lot of violence in the movie saving private ryan for instance but i wouldn't say that that violence isn't isn't justified violence that it doesn't have a, a morally justifiable message yeah well, that's that's true that's a distinction anyone can make really yeah but, no. that, but i think as well it's like a lot of people forget you know i don't speak to I speak from any kind of authority because art is subjective but I, but i think not all art is actually meant to make you feel good. Like I think you're it's some something <laughs> meant to go away and feel kind of bad. Like one of my favorite films of all time is Old Boy, the original Korean film. Um, yeah, I don't that's know if a great one. It, but it's absolutely fantastic. I've only seen it once. I never intend to watch it again because watching that film, if anybody's seen it, will know what I mean. Is it makes you feel utterly disgusting. Yeah, it's a, it's a right. revenge it's, movie it, to end all. Re- oh, oh my god, dude, that movie is like the I, impact it leaves on you is just unspeakably good. Now that's art, but I'll never watch it again because it's fucking horrendous. Yeah, right? you see what I mean? It's like a cognitive dissonance thing. So I think people, you know, it's this whole idea that you're supposed to like cruise through life without anything nasty happening to you or having any nasty experiences. So, well, some nasty experiences can be beautiful. That that is the whole idea behind critical theory. What you're laying out, though, like critical theory is you can't really enjoy art for art's sake. That art is judged on the criteria of how how uh, how impactful it is on moving the dial on social justice, or really any kind of like moving moving moral aims forward. Which I think is terrible. I think art needs to uh, art should be acceptable just on art for art's sake. Right. Well, there's also you should also be able to make value judgments when it comes to art, and that's what a lot of critical theorists uh, do. And they only base that judgment on 
Like, does it move the needle, like you said, on social justice issues? And I think that's a horrible, horrible metric because if you go to any uh, contemporary art museum, for instance, any wing of a museum that's contemporary art, it makes you puke. And if I did puke yeah. on the wall, and it would be one of, <laughs> it'd be great it'd be art. Be modern art. me. But <laughs> I, my subjective value on art is how does it make me feel? And um, but there is good and bad art. I think that that's the distinction between art and propaganda. I think I think if your me if your metric by which you're creating this art or creating this piece or creating whatever it may be is to is to enforce some kind of agenda, then I think I think that's propaganda. Whereas if you're making something ba on the basis of how it makes you feel, how it makes other people feel, you know, how it's, you know, where it, it comes from something from a creative basis, not something, you know, like it feels not something that feels like a, you know, like a bunch of dudes in suits around the table, you know, made a decision on. Um, I, I think that's maybe the distinction. Yeah. Well, I don't know where to, where to go uh, with video games. I mean, certainly, parents should watch what their children play. Um, and the fact that we have ideologues on both sides scapegoating video games is extremely worrying to me. It's like... Um, the, the left is the new... Are the new conservatives? Are the new... What's his name? Jack Thompson? Harrison's. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll remember Jack Thompson, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. Been, there's no correlation whatsoever between video games and violence or sure. sex, races. You know, there's no correlation to that. So I don't understand and maybe you guys can help me out. Why go after video games? It seems like a bit of harmless fun. I, I know exactly why they go after video no. games. Because the gamers don't vote. The They're such a perfect scapegoat. Because a lot of times they want to blame video games on the on the gun issue. Well, gun owners vote. And the middle class uh, you know, parents that are scared their kids are going to get shot up at school, they vote too. So <laughs> you gotta find, you got to find someone to target that's not going to show up at the polls. And the video game... Gamers are the perfect target. Mm. Yeah, that's a good thing. I never never thought of it like that. Name it the politically apathetic. Yeah, totally. Like yeah. Me, me, uh, that mentally disabled people, they don't vote either. You think that's why they target <laughs> porn so, too? Like, you think that's why they hate porn? Like, both the con both the quote unquote conservative left and the conservative kind of Christian right kind of hate porn. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's, it's becoming that way as well. Like even in Scotland, I mean, you can't even film, you know, a woman having an orgasm in, in Scotland, in, in Scotland, in the UK anymore. You know, it's like become so like anti-porn, you know, it's the same kind of thing. You know, it's like, you know, like basement dwellers who watch porn and play video games don't vote. <laughs> it's genius. Yeah. I'd like to see what it looks like when a woman orgasms. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, it's, about it's a myth, mate. Don't worry about it. It doesn't it's exist. A like global warming, you know, female orgasm is a myth. That's yeah. Now, fact to the number, uh, had a good point. Um, it's an appeal to the soccer mom demographic. Yeah, I, I think oh, yeah. soccer moms that we hear have here in America. I'm sure there's another term for them in uh, Europe, but uh, that kind of middle class Mom, mom's net. Yeah. Anyone, like, who, anyone who frequents mom's net, you know, it's something for them to go. Eh, to go here, here we. Moment. Here we have the term helicopter parent. I think that's quite uh, fitting. Yeah, that's what we have too. Huh. I mean, I know kids who are like, not even kids, 26-year-olds in college who have their parents do everything, even out of college. Doctor's appointments, uh, like drive into the doctor's appointments, pay their cell phone bill. Like, oof. Mm. I, I yeah. wish my parents still pay. I wish my parents ever did uh, pay my cell phone bill. <laughs> Personally, I moved out at seventeen. Um, uh, yeah, I really wouldn't be able to move out yet, but not not with the current conditions here, at least in the Netherlands. So, anyone else thoughts on this uh, video game madness going after? Uh, really, my favorite hobby. Yeah, same for me. Like, yeah, yeah. Stay, stay away from my uh, fucking games. They, they all, they almost uh, like, like a t tabletop gaming probably takes the edge for for me. Um, big Warhammer fan, and they've not quite attacked our hobby that much yet. But you can see it creeping in. You know, you can see the um, you know, 
the, uh, the 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 kind of thing coming in. I think it springboards off of the D and D, like you know, because like D and D is uh, you know RPG. <laughs> yeah, heavily no. attacked. Yeah, no, Wizards of the Coast has been completely co-opted by the fucking uh, SJWs. Like, in uh, Magic the Gathering, uh, D&D is really, really bad. That's actually why I stopped playing D&D. I, I, play, I actually play a, a game called uh, Pathfinder and Starfinder now, just because I don't want to buy anything from Wizards of the Coast at all. Pathfinder. Great. Oh, yeah, Pathfinder's great. Yeah. But, I wouldn't know. <laughs> But yeah, but they, these these were also one a source. <laughs> once were a source of uh, of this of this outrage that they're uh, that we're worshiping demons and you know we're getting bad influences and it's it's, it's mm-hmm. causing us all to you know it's, there's always someone else to blame because they don't want to look in the mirror and go oh maybe it's my shitty parenting that's making my son like one mental and shit up my school. Mm. Yeah, maybe you guys can help me out. What's going on with Wizards of the Coast? Like I only heard like bits and pieces. I'm reluctant to talk about it because I used to run a gaming store and I've, de- I've dealt directly with them. <laughs> I've, and, uh, needless to say, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest of relationships at the end. Uh, you're gonna... it, yeah, Wizards of the Coast is basically been devolving into this like hotbed of any sort of uh, uh, intersectional ideology, right? Like. Magic the Gathering is be- is being turned into um, like a lot of like transgenders uh, things like that, and and they're actually like changing base characters. Like the the set that's just coming out uh, called Dominaria. One of the main characters uh, from the previous version, uh, the pre the previous sets when they w- went into Dominaria, uh, was a captain called it was Captain Sisse, right, and they changed the character when there was actual visual pictures of this person back then. And they changed how she looked. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like just to bring your agenda forward. And it's just insane. It's insane to me to hear that stuff. Cause I I've, I've been playing magic since like 95 when I was like nine years old and it was a fun ass game. I, I don't appreciate watching the game that I love get just like, completely corrupted into some bullshit over a uh, over pol- uh, political agendas it's insane it's well it's it's just basically the understanding i think the uh intersectional progressive left understands that uh like breitbart andrew breitbart said that uh politics are downstream from culture mm-hmm. so such a transparent once you start being able to recognize it it's such a transparent culture grab in in that way it's like yeah what haven't we gotten to yet? Because we got in academia, we've gotten entertainment, we've gotten the media. Uh, what is left for us? And then they start going after <laughs> such things. And um, it's the same thing they had the comic scare in the 1950s in America. Mm-hmm. Like, comics are gory, they're causing kids to kill people. Like, rock and roll is doing this too. <laughs> games as well. You're, some, some, you're not allowed to play like Tig or Tag or, you know, British Bulldogs. No, no dodgeball out the window you know, they're like they're like completely anesthetizing any kind of competitiveness or you know talking about this you know before it's 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 complete gentrification you know you're it, 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 we live in a world of uh, you know um, school participation prizes and and toxic meritocracy and you know all this kind of thing and there, there there's nothing's nothing safe anymore you're not allowed an activity without being part of some kind of "Quote unquote problematic issue." I can't believe they're getting rid of tag and stuff, but yes, they uh, yeah. they certainly do hate competition. Just overall, they just can't stand competition because basically, someone has to be better than another person, and to say someone's better than someone, ooh, that's a that's problematic. Yeah, that's, that's not equality. Equality. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Right, we're- Speaking of, I was watching ants. The other day, uh, yesterday, I think it was, and it's a fantastic. <coughs> it's an excellent uh, criticism of collectivism. Um, and uh, sitting watching that, and it is the whole thing. It's about you know equality, and you know that big uh, that military guy is like only the colony matters. No, no, the individual ant doesn't matter. Only the colony. I'm like Jesus Christ is Jeremy Corbyn. And, uh, 
It was just, it was just fantastic. Oh. Excellent film. But yeah, that's the that's the whole thing. It's like if you if you guys do, but they, what they've managed to do as well, is they've managed to worm this situation into um, into a place where if you if you disagree, you're some kind of you're immoral. If you disagree with equality in any way, you're like immoral. You're like a bad person, and mm. and that's that's the danger right there. You know that's that that's what you, you know you start to pigeonhole people and then and paint them with this negative image. It's uh, you know, it, it, it pangs of some serious, um, serious, uh, huge problems. So speaking of huge problems, here we have China. They're using facial recognition to find jaywalkers by text. Have you used three, she three seashells? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs to learn the three seashells quick. <laughs> So right now they display information on giant LED uh, screens. You know, they go, "Oh, you're jaywalking!" Now we're going to publicly shame you. Um, <laughs> that picture kind of looks like a Nintendo amiibo. Yeah. I'm just just looking at that. Do they have a jaywalking epidemic or something? Is I, you know, I don't know if they're trying to. What kind of problem they're trying to fight? <laughs> You go some places, and man, there are people standing out in the middle of the road. <laughs> like, well, I, I thought the punishment for jaywalking was kind of self-evident. Like, you know, you walk across. The yeah, road you get hit. You get hit by a car. <laughs> like, <laughs> by the car. like that, there's your punishment. <laughs> you know, if you don't get hit by a car, good for you. You, you know, you were lucky that day. You know? We're all laughing. They're probably hospitalizing like three people a week. <laughs> for all we don't, maybe it is an issue. Okay, we got something to do. <laughs> we got to do something here. These people well, are idiots. Yeah. Well, the chi the Chinese are all like their entire country's fucked up. So, like, yeah. they might actually just be like, like selling it on pay per view for like a, like a live version of Frogger. <laughs> like th this fucking China. It doesn't surprise me that uh, China is uh, violating uh, the privacy of its citizens. There's no privacy. In China. I mean, we can yeah. <laughs> I don't think they really demand it in China. I think they just have such a different outlook that. Well, their foundation is one of authoritarianism. I mean, they've always been, the people there have always been that way. That's why it, it displays in their culture um, that yeah. they're observant. Um, Definitely. Authoritarian is the, is the perfect word for it. They they just, they have a, a, a stronger sense that they're a part of their families, their community, their, they, they accept their fate. We're very individualistic in America. That would that stuff would never fly over here. No. Citizen four nine two six walking violation. <laughs> <laughs> they would probably bow in shame. They'd be like, "Oh no, I've disgraced my whole family. I got caught jaywalking." Falling a sword. Middle <laughs> <laughs> of the street. No, in a city where the facial recognition was implemented, it, they're saying that the jaywalking has been reduced, reduced by eighty percent. Oh, I bet. I'm just they, gonna don't want, they don't want to bring shame on their family. I'm just going to walk around with a Guy Fox mask. There you go. Get fucked, uh, Jay Walking system. <laughs> you have a black bag over your head in a box. Yeah. <laughs> Probably has retinal scanners. Plus, the, they have a, a measurement now that they can detect. Evidently, the distance between a person's eyes is very unique. So even if you're wearing a mask, they can tell the distance between your eyes and narrow it down considerably. Yeah, catch the uh, the bike lock, gentlemen. And uh, imagine if they use this tech for good. What could for <laughs> good? Do they are? They're stopping jaywalking. <laughs> <laughs> what they're stopping? Well, thank fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, about time. Yeah, you know, there's actual terrorists that you could use this for to stop. You know, <laughs> nah, get those fucking jaywalkers. <laughs> those fuck guys them. telling jokes. Yeah. <laughs> The, the money's probably in the jaywalking, not in the fighting terror. There's not enough real terrorism in the world to actually make money off it. The jaywalkers, it's like we can get seven or eight of these guys a day. It's like the same thought process in the states where they had the uh, the red light and the speeding cameras. It is kind of like what I'm thinking. This is operating under. Oh yeah, they ended up pulling those out of California now because they caused more accidents than they. Because people were ducking down as they were they were trying to avoid getting taken a picture of, and then they'd slam into some cars. <laughs> it's awesome. 
I love that kind of unintended outcome. Oh, I know. It's, uh, Dude, that shit's great. Never underestimate the power of people to try in trying not to get a ticket. <laughs> Do you know, it'll be like, you know, like hashtag citizen4927 walk in violation minus four social points. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's I, the next fucking step. And then yeah, it's I, like. I think China has a program uh, in, in which that, that is happening with the social yeah. points. Yeah. So that probably is going to be implemented in this, I guess. Well, that that wouldn't surprise me one bit. Mind a kilogram of salt. Bling! Achievement unlocked. <laughs> the social they, points. You can now buy a beer. Wait, they teach, they I, teach etiquette in school about the internet, that they, that they shouldn't do anything on the internet that they wouldn't do in person, which I think might actually be a good thing. Yeah, I think internet etiquette would be good. That's just for kids. Yeah. But, um... No, the, the deal with the social system, I believe, is that you can't like rent rooms or rent a car or like do things if you're under a certain threshold. Um, which Gee, incidentally, that was like when we were talking about the the, the 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 child offenders and things like that earlier on. I was thinking like the the of like how would you mo the most ethically like kind of you know from a libertarian perspective like deal with a pedophile and. I think that we're, we're kind of in the, going in the right direction with the sex offenders register. Like, we just fucking blacklist them. You can't get a job, you can't get a house, won't rot. Here's the deal about that. And why, if you are such that you need to be on a list, um, and you shouldn't be out of prison in that case, right? Because if people have to watch out for you and you're a danger, why are you out of prison if you're a danger to children? Exactly. In my opinion, prison uh, should be based on if you have recovered, even like not punishment, but uh, recovery. Like a rehabilitation center, as opposed to like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's just, just like can pedophiles be rehabilitated? I mean, just think like I mean, no, probably not. Itself, <laughs> the it's the child of child offense. It's the crime. Like, do you think pedophilia is like is there a cure? You you uh, a cure? you can't you can't get like. The, the wanting to fuck children yeah. uh, out of them. But maybe that, you... like, that have this desire and don't indulge in it in any way. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't like know them. <laughs> I know of there's, there's the fact that these do exist and they indulge in their um and their desires in kind of various ways, but um, non nefarious ways, like in kind of non victimized ways. If that makes sense. I think we know um, what I mean as to pedophiles. I think we can guess. How someone breaks their lock. Someone even like Jay walks over there. They get their face scanned. What do you think? What yeah, What do you right. think is going to happen though when the when the sex robots are perfected though? Do you think it'll be? I mean, it's so gross to think about, but think about it. <laughs> like, well, I'm just. I mean, the what is the what is the ethics around a child sex robot? That's like. Well, somebody didn't somebody say that. This would be like an like an actual solution to to a lot of children. I know that's a, that's I think people would pitch it as a solution, but I just yeah. shudder at the thought of it. I still think it's a behavior that. Here's what I would do. That that shouldn't be promoted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For to cure them, is, is, that, is that the kind of route you're 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 kind of driving at? With? That we shouldn't produce the robots. But anyone who goes. Oh to no! Bring the sex robots on. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Bring on the sex. <laughs> For sure. Come on. I'll fucking, I'll, I'll fucking find a made version of that shit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hold on, hold on. What is the liberalist platform on sex robots? I need to know. No, right? not Ooh, important. Fire movement. I speak for myself when I say <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying is do not create uh, sex robots in the form of a child, but have okay, them. Okay, I'm with that. Have yeah. them available for purchase, and anyone who goes to purchase one gets thrown into a fucking gulag. Oof. Oh. <laughs> That's not execute them on the spot. <laughs> where, did, where did Uncle Tim go? I don't know. He was ordering something on Amazon. Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> let's look. Let's check his Amazon order history. Oh shit! <laughs> like 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 a, a gun on USB, and if you purchase it, it fires. <laughs> it just puts your dick in a blender. It's it's. Just <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Looks like Uncle Timmy bought something called Lollybot. What's oh <laughs> <laughs> <just> penis? <laughs> Actually, you're not Google, maybe yeah, Blender, uh, Blender vagina. 
Be- blender. blender in the child robot. Yeah. There you go. And honestly, I would not feel bad. <laughs> I'd be like, that's what you get. Yep. <laughs> no, no, now. Friend. Warning. Child robot does contain. That <laughs> does contain. A destroying device. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people would be like, worth it. It's oh my. That's it. In which case, I'm happy for those people to indulge. <laughs> those are the same people that watch the B and E Pain Olympics. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Let's. Uh, how do we go from China to <laughs> sex? Uh, I don't know. Uh, somebody's somebody's to blame for that, and I'm sure I'm going to hear about it later. Yep. Right. Uh, well, that's case of Rasara, right? Uh, we got our final topic today. Let's make it a little lighthearted. Hopefully, it doesn't go the direction of the last topic we did. So, give me one second. Let me pull it up for you. It's I'm sure some of you have seen this. It's the guy who carved up a yeah ear leg in his window, and he's finally responded to interview requests. So, apparently, if you haven't seen the video, a bunch of vegans were protesting this guy. Oh my god! This Not is the best way to troll a bunch of vegans. Get fucked as I'm carving up this deer leg. Get out of here. Go away. <laughs> you know what they were trying to say? If you watch the video, these vegans go to protest this guy who I guess deals in purely venison because that's the name of the restaurant. Um, they were trying to go after him, and there's someone recording doing like play by play, and they're detailing everything that's going on. And they're like, it's so. It, the part that made me the angriest was when they got the police to go in there and talk to the guy. And, you know, they're like, we're going to see if this is okay for him to do. It's, you know, health codes. It's like, one, the restaurant is obviously closed. Um, so that, in America, that wouldn't matter. Like, it's your restaurant. You can do that. And the, it made me angry, but then it made me laugh when um, by the end of the time, end of the video, the cops are smiling and, you know, <laughs> they're yeah. like eating steaks. Yeah, and the the, uh, the guy filming goes, oh, they're laughing. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I personally hate those people who, like, try to push it on you, you know. I have no problem with vegans and vegetarians who just are that. But the moment when uh, when when you, you're telling me that you're a vegetarian or a vegan and it doesn't... <laughs> it doesn't oh, matter. Oh, no, that's the best picture ever right there. The way he's, he's just eating a steak right in front of him. Like, this is of great. Course. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> really. Yeah, those are those are the asshole vegans. They're yeah. Like, you know, like, because... Um... Asshole vegans, so they eat ass, but they won't eat meat. Yep. <laughs> Exclusively asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I see, I don't get it. It was like six people. I mean, I get it. I get it. It's just like there are there are better ways to protest that. Like, don't buy his fucking meat. There's better yeah. things to do. Like, go jaywalking in China for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> we earn some money for the fucking for the six game. people is a pretty yeah, pathetic example. protest. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Six whole people. That's all you could get. Cause it's who cares? D- deer meat's delicious. Venison's yeah. delicious. There's no way around. I had a teacher in school who was a hunter, and he would bring, uh, whenever he hunt, whenever he killed a deer, he'd bring us in be like uh, deer jerky and uh, like deer oh sticks. And, yeah, no, it it's so the greatest good. teacher I ever had in my Great entire teacher. fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, why are all these? Oh, there's the, there's the protesters. <laughs> why aren't they? Why are they all ugly? <laughs> <laughs> And they're supposed to be in, but I don't see like a fit person out of all of them. When I look at this and I just see the left, I'm like, the left can't meme. Like this, they, this fucking bit, this sign is garbage. <laughs> they just assume that deer's gender, didn't they? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Me. They can get fined by uh, in Canada for that, can't they? Because it yeah. is, you know. If I was the guy running the place, I'd demand they call me a, pro, a specific pronoun, like mm. Lord. Or like <laughs> technically, I think with animals, you're supposed to use their their life versus your dinner, because you don't know the sex of animals unless you're some. Well, a deer has like, only a. Oh yeah, yeah. From a distance, a deer is actually yeah. You're pretty good at sexing deers. Yeah. <laughs> Se- sexing cats and dogs from a distance is not as easy. Well, well, you just got to get a long enough stick. 
Oh, the, this. What is this? I want to see this picture. Oh, this is another good one. This is a video from inside. I guess. I can... Oh, this is video from inside. Oh, murder. <laughs> Like seriously, guys, um, let people eat the food, fucking food they want. Yeah. yeah why are same? we policing food? For God's sakes! Because this is the same exact tactic tactic that they tried with the jaywalking, though. They're trying to shame them. They're ah. spraying murders. They're springing pictures of. They're trying to pull at the your pull at the heartstrings. Had a friend that had a T-shirt that said, "For every uh, animal you don't eat, I eat three. I was just like, "Yep, that guy knows it. That guy, the guy knows exactly what's going on." <laughs> protest always, all the time. It seems like the last two years, at least, the protest of the intersection progressive left has been um, counterintuitive, counterproductive, in that they make the worst enemies they could ever imagine. Like they yeah. make Peterson what he is now, and apparently, this guy at Antler is getting a lot more business now. Oh, totally. Yeah, off the hook. Great. Is that so in I Canada? Yeah, Toronto. Um, if I'm ever in Toronto, I'll make sure I eat at his uh at his steakhouse. <laughs> we, uh, actually, we we should organize a liberalist meetup there. Yeah, <laughs> we know any. Uh, we do know some Quebecois, so we have yeah, to set that up. I had debated uh, vegan gains and vegan gains. Oh, uh, this guy. <laughs> he wouldn't. He would not make. I was trying to get him to make concessions, but they have this ethical stance that completely backs them up against a wall where they can't they're in no position to negotiate so even if you could negotiate like ethical standards for slaughter and treatment of animals they won't even go there because they want they just want the world mm -hmm. how do you negotiate with people like that you don't negotiate with terrorists you don't yeah totally <laughs> yeah. yeah this is the thing with uh they want to be Everyone, if you think about progress in a society, and I'm not talking about progressives, but if you're thinking about progress, like every generation has to be a link on the chain. Um, the problem with these kind of people is they want to be that link, the only link, the last link, and they end history itself. Like, we're going to end this now. And it's like, oh, you can't. It turns out you really can't end something like this now. Like, if they were seriously about uh, making people switch to a vegan lifestyle, there's far more proactive peaceful ways to do so than stepping on other people's autonomy yeah uh, and i don't think it's about like personally i don't think for them it's about um a good cause i think it's about um they want to feel more that's how i feel about gains too it's like you just want to feel morally superior you don't care about animals definitely like, like there is no such thing as altruism in that sense that he has his own self-interest and all these kind of very small minority of vegans, but um, anyone who's like this, ideologically speaking, is a very small minority. But they do not care about the cause they purport to, because then they would they would sit there and do something more positive. They wouldn't alienate and isolate people. They would, you know, they would do good for other people. They would make it easier for other people to join up. Yeah, I I brought up the the fishing and gaming stuff because that's so culturally entwined and also a lot of there a lot of meats are eaten around holidays and that's culturally entwined and it's such a small minority of the meat eating that goes on but he wouldn't even give that up like, I'm like wow you're cr you're crazy you're you're saying people like if a, if a dad wants to take his his kids fishing that should be wrong <laughs> it should be immoral do you, do you want to know how I actually do this? Because I'm going to interject at this point and say that I'm I'm actually vegan, and the way oh. I actually um, introduce wow. people to to the vegan uh, lifestyle, if you like, is I cook them something fucking delicious. I used to be a chef, so I, I know how to make like nice food, and I know how to make it like without meat and dairy, and it's uh, it's it's usually pretty fucking good. So I I feed this unwittingly to my friends who come over and stuff, and say, oh, this is really good and stuff. That and I say it's a, a vegan meal, and they go, "Wow, I didn't know it could be this tasty." Um, and and they go, "There, well, there you go. I'm I'm glad I I enlightened you in in that way." And you know, there are ways, there are means ways to do it. Like these guys, instead of standing outside of this this guy's business and and ruining his day, 
could could have gone off and earned some money and then spent some of that money on Linda McCartney's vegan sausages, which are bloody delicious. And then you're actually do you're doing a, it's a more of an agorist route where you're actually using the market to protest against things that you don't want to actually fund and you don't want to see. Um, you know, it's there. There's your protest. Don't fucking yeah. buy it. Yeah. So I'm guessing you have a, a special kind of uh, maybe a different kind of resentment towards these vegans, Kaz. Oh, for sure, yeah, because like they make they make vegans like me look like kind of look like assholes. And whenever you want to kind of talk about kind of talk about the situation, or maybe maybe explain it from a kind of different angle, you kind of is like, oh, here we go, he's vegan. I'm vegan, by the way. I'm all, I also vape. You know, so it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't want to you don't want to kind of like you know I I've even got to the point nowadays where it's like especially in Scotland because it's it's quite popular up here and it's very popular with. With all, with all the lefties and it's very it's very red country up here and and uh, i even identify myself as kind of right wing these days just to just so i can alienate just so i can make make it clear that i'm not with these people <laughs> so it's um it's it, it's it's a funny one but um yeah these these guys are just uh, are, are just are just not doing themselves any favors not bringing bringing anybody to the cause quote unquote um, well, if you want to call it, call it that, because I'm I'm not even in it from a kind of cause perspective. Again, it's it's from it's from my own self interests. So I'd I'd rather have a diet that doesn't consume um, heavily subsidised and uh, unsustainable industries that I'm being forced to fund through my taxes anyway. Um, so you know that's that's my that's my angle on it. That's my, it's like, yeah. Um, People speaking gains, man. I would just ask them straight out, like, what's more important, human autonomy or an animal's life? Like, you can't, I'm sorry, but if you place an animal's life over human autonomy, then you're just making, you just want slaves. They, no, you're right. They put the, the, the answer to that question is, is easy. It's, it's human autonomy by, by far. Uh, but I, I think the argument extends further than that, because I think in order for a lot of the agricultural industry and a lot of the meat and dairy industry to exist, that has to be propped up by the state and through, and through heavily, heavy sub, subsidization, through taxation. Um, taxation um, benefits and grants and all these types of things, um, and then there's the, the the whole land thing, especially when it comes to the EU and the common agricultural policy, and all these types of things. If all that framework disappeared, you know, you'd be you'd be spending, you know, to maybe forty, fifty dollars on a steak. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, in which case, the free market should then decide whether or not you're going to go down the supermarket and spend fifty, sixty dollars on a on 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 a on a hand reared kind of um, bit of bit of meat that hasn't been subsidized by the state um or you're going to spend a few pence on some on, on some fruit and veg um so that, that's that's my kind of that's my kind of kind of thought process on it but when it comes to when it comes to human autonomy over or, or, or human human autonomy like when it, you know that that old conundrum if you're on a if you're on a desert island and you had to hunt to survive would you it's like well, of course <laughs> like this against my self-interest to, to starve myself as you know I, I, I'm, as as I, as an as a natural thing um <clears throat> but i think nowadays especially um with it becoming one thing i do admire these people for is it, it has become a lot more fashionable um to be vegan which makes it easier for me to buy to buy delicious things um, <laughs> there's now more companies like making like vegan cheese and stuff um so you don't necessarily have to miss all the things that you know you you, you were hey, given up. can i ask a question about the liberalist thing are liberalists for uh progressive taxation well, there's no official stance on that, especially economics, um, which we have a lot of people that are center left, center right. The most important thing is that we're not in the north of the quadrants, if you know what I mean. Like, we do not believe authoritarianism. As far as like taxation goes, I don't give two shits about taxation when you can't make a joke without getting arrested. Exactly. So ta there's no taxation policy for liberalists. No, I mean that's such. I mean. How do I phrase this? Um, every idea should be defended. We, we must uh, have an open discussion of ideas. The ability to discuss ideas must be defended. And until we can guarantee that throughout the West, that people have a right to speak, mm -hmm. no reason to even have a discussion on policy like this. So it's focused on, exclusively on free speech, basically. Uh, not just speech, but expression itself. Because honestly... Right, yeah, yeah like to see is the kid with the Che Guevara tattoo get shamed. Just like if someone take a fat dump on his head. 
Like, mm-hmm. like we shame in America anyone who flies a Nazi flag, justifiably so. But he's still allowed to fly. Yet if you're walking around a gay pride parade with a with a Che Guevara tattoo and a communist flag, like you're treated as just run of the mill. Like that's normal. Like yeah. you, I don't know if that's a failure of the education system or the parents or society in general. But the Overton window must move away from the authoritarian left matrix because it's skewed a little too heavily. Um, yeah, I, there there is some asymmetry there. I went the I actually started digging into the authoritarian left thing and whilst the social sciences are very left leaning obviously uh i don't i think the the right is more predisposed to physical violence than the left actually is and i think that this can can be quantified in a number of studies so oh, conversation about that that's for sure um i think authoritarianism is just as likely on either side and to be fair um but, I don't but using vi- using violence though is definitely something that you have to take into consideration. Like if the right authoritarians are willing to, to use violence and the left authoritarians are just going to complain a lot. (laughs) Like it's, 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 I don't see how you can call that equal. How, how, but do you remember during the 2016 campaign, the election? I haven't Mm -hmm. Did we see anyone from the right shut down a Hillary Clinton rally the way we saw it happen to a Trump rally? But they, uh, the things that I'm talking about are very specific studies, and you can go to like Google Scholar and look up left wing authoritarianism. And they've, right wing authoritarianism came out of, came out of the social sciences in search of what caused the Nazi Holocaust, how normal people could be turned into Nazis. And they developed this thing called the RWA, which was the right wing authoritarian scale. And the right wing authoritarian scale kind of developed into this, this test to test for conservatism and, and conservatism. Conservatives are very different than liberals, but most liberals focus mostly on, care that's really what drives their politics like the liberals in front of this vegan restaurant they all they care about the deer more than they care about the people's dinners so those people are going to be less prone uh, sure sure there's aberrations like the the bike lock guy who smashed a guy over the head but those if you take people into the lab and you give them questionnaires those aberrations, the the violence on the left is very hard to find. The vi- the left is much more squeamish about violence than the right is. Right. Well, the left will generally use the working class because they don't care if the working class bleeds. Um, that's why whenever you see someone advocating for street level violence, they constantly try to push the working class to do it around America <laughs> because they don't care if the working class lives or dies. They really don't. They act like they're on their side, but their policies are detrimental to them. Um, that's just the same thing, though, if you look at the right. But I think what we have here is uh, a foundation for an excellent discussion, if you're willing to come back on with me. Sure. Uh, right. But we are coming up on that time. So I want to thank all of you for coming out, for watching. Um, Kaz, I thank love you. Thank you for having me, man. It was, it was a pleasure. No problem. Uh, Damnation. What's up? And Mr. Fended Forever, thank you. What's up? Thanks for having me. Yorick, that flag behind you. When is that going to be available? What? That flag behind you going to be available for sale? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be able to put the time frame up yet. <laughs> All right. We're working on it. It's pretty uh, bad. Yeah. Uh, that was Glitch on Discord who made that uh, that logo. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a, gr- it's, a, it's a great logo and it looks g- uh, great on the flag. So uh, watch yeah. out for that. We'll probably... Uh, we can't forget Stalto. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm Dan Vern around the Facebook and with the Liberalists. And uh, this has been a very fantastic stream. So I want to thank, yeah. again, thank all of you and have a fantastic night. Good night. Take care, everyone. Later. Hey.